What's going on everybody? This is, I think, the same video, even though I, I think I left off the last part of the video with like, see you later, thanks for watching and whatnot, but I don't know how long that video will be once I edit it, so just finishing it up. So I've got the RAM in here today. I made some room, kind of cleaned up a little bit, got the back door open. Still a mess, but at least I can work on the RAM somewhat. <clears throat> uh, I did some kind of checking around on the on the internet and some Facebook groups and whatnot about how these four-wheel drive actuators and vacuum systems work and uh, some guys were saying that uh, there's a vacuum switch on top of the transfer case which actuates that and it pulls vacuum from the right side of the plenum or manifold <clears throat> so on the plenum here I do see this this vacuum hose or line with a bunch of T's in it. One goes over there to something. I don't know what's there really, but um, I did find this one end here. It's melted off. And uh, this end here, which was this part. Um, so this is probably why my blend door and heat control and all that stuff doesn't work inside the truck. Uh, you can't really see it, but <clears throat> down there on top of the transfer case is a switch and there's a like a vacuum line down in there which I'll try to show you but this was the uh, end of it so <clears throat> or I'm, I'm sorry this was up here and I took this vacuum line which is some that I had laying around and then this end here was melted off down there by the transfer case so I don't know what what this exactly is because it had three holes in it and it had a little filter element like a little screen inside so I don't know if it's supposed to bleed off vacuum or how that's exactly supposed to work but I had some of this vacuum hose vac hard vacuum line and I just kind of hot glued everything together to test it out so I plugged up the holes put some high temp RTV in it just to kind of make a little bit of a seal blocked off any vacuum port that there could be, um, vacuum leaks rather. So now I'm just going to plug this in to the line down there on the transfer case and then bring it up here and plug this in to <clears throat> this part of the line and see if that works. This is feels completely melted shut. I don't see even a hole or anything so I don't think that that's going to be a vacuum leak. And I can't see any other point on this where it's broken or, or like melted open or anything. So if that is true, that the, the transfer case switch, vacuum switch is controlled from that, then this is the only thing I can see that goes down there and there are no other ports. And I, <clears throat> at least uh, on the older Dodges and stuff, all of the heater control stuff, is all vacuum controlled through there so I don't see where, I, where else I can get vacuum from so anyway I'm gonna go plug this in um, there's really no room down there for you to see but give it a shot and uh, hopefully it works we'll see in a minute well I'll take you down here anyway these are some of the vacuum lines that go to that switch on top of the trans and uh, here's the vacuum lines that go up to, uh, sorry for all the clinking, go along those hard lines, go all the way back up and to the actuator. So if you remember, we did test those hard lines and they turned out to be okay. So <clears throat> that is the only thing I can see that would potentially be a problem is that. So if you follow that thing up, um, this is where it ends up right here the green one the other one is it goes up here and it is hooked in solid so um, I don't see where that would be a problem so what I'm gonna do is fish this man I'm sorry it's really difficult to kind of get you guys down here fish this down and attach this right here if I can there we go 
Now, I don't know for sure, but that should be, that's, that's my little grabber thing, that should have connected the open vacuum line to the switch. So hopefully that's all it takes. So <clears throat> let's go up and get into the truck and see if that works. So I don't know, maybe. These welding hats are awesome for working around underneath the trucks. So anyway, let's see if it works. There's the little grabber thing that I used. These things are pretty cool. <clears throat> They're pretty handy if you don't have one. I have another one of these shields or fillers or filler. I don't know what these things are called. But I got another one of those to put in. Now, yeah, everything should work. Let me make sure that nothing is hanging like that light. Let me fix that and we'll get right to it. All right, so the moment of truth. Let's see, I think it's in neutral right now. Yeah, all right, so that's, what is that? Four low, I guess. <clears throat> So that's in reverse, or as close as to reverse as I can get it. Um, ah, damn it. There we go. So that's four low. Got low wash. Man, I can't ever tell when I'm in any gear with this thing. I guess neutral. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, that's four high. Well, Okay, so what did, what did I say that was in? Four high, two high. So that's four low. I don't know if this truck even has a four wheel drive indicator on it. <clears throat> There we go. Huh. I don't know. <clears throat> I can tell when uh, when I shift the transfer case into um, into any of the four wheel drive gears. I can't rotate the, the drive shaft any longer. So that's probably just you know it must be engaging something in the transfer case whether or not it it turns on the light or it actually switches into into 4x4 mode I don't know so I guess we're just going to figure it out okay so I got the unit back out uh, if you'll notice there's some RTV on that it's super difficult for me to show you this with What I do with it? There it is. So I've got this multimeter, and I will show you what how it works, how you test this switch, because I was under the impression that possibly the switch isn't working. So in the truck, I jumped these contacts right here, 
with a piece of wire and the four-wheel drive light came on. So now that we know that the four-wheel drive light on the dash works, we know that um, this, this switch was <clears throat> suspect. So what I do here is you got this, right? You probably see it. It's showing whatever. Okay, so as soon as the switch is pulled off, it's open. Now it's closed, so it means the light should be on. So now it's open. Now it's closed. So this switch does work because the multimeter, the ohms, ohm meter, is telling us that the switch is actually functioning correctly. So I reinstalled it. I kind of beat it around a little bit and uh, and lubed it up and put it in there or put it back in, put a little bit of RTV on it just to kind of keep it um, weather resistant because the O-ring in here was looking a little bit beat up. So that works. Now I did test this with a vacuum gauge and uh, you can see the arm move back and forth. So um, I didn't think about showing that to you, but I'll go get the vacuum gauge and check it out. All right, so let's see. Hopefully you guys can see it. So this is the input and output. Sucks it around. So now this, the, the fork is all the way that side. So by putting some vacuum onto this side, it's going to pull that fork over. All right? So now that would be actually disengaged. So that should, right there, disengage the four-wheel drive. Now, if we take it, put it over here, now the vacuum switch inside the truck, when you don't want, when you disconnect the transfer case, it should, oh, I'm sorry, the reverse. Whenever I engage the transfer case, because I want it in four-wheel drive, then it puts vacuum on this side, pulls it on over. There you go. So then whenever you don't want it in four-wheel drive, this thing, We'll pull the fork back over and the collar will slide back. So that is that. So we know that this works. We know that the light inside the get the dash works because I checked it by just taking a piece of wire and, and jumping it across the other end of this. So just a loop which completed the circuit and lets us know that the switch works. So. I'm going to show you, I, I did test the vacuum in the truck, so hooked up a vacuum gauge to the vacuum lines there and then put it in and out of, um, in and out of four wheel drive. Now I'll show you right here, you can see that the vacuum is working. So there you go. So now we got vacuum uh, running 
to those lines so it is actually functioning so either this was working fine before and the switch was just intermittent or I didn't have it connected all the way down which I'm pretty sure that I did when wouldn't, wouldn't close anymore or I somehow installed this thing in a point where it it just wasn't wasn't moving correctly so I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process, sorry about that, repeat the process, install everything again, and hopefully that will be it for this job. No love, man. I don't understand. Neutral. Yeah, the light won't come on. So, it could be, I don't know how to test it. Uh, it could be that that switch, the connection is just not right on it. I don't know, I can jack the whole truck up and test it that way, but I thought for sure that we were going to I thought for sure it'd be working right now, but I guess not. So unless it has to, you know what? It might be that the truck has to move around. Hmm, let me see. Well, that wasn't it. So it's in four low right now. Still no four wheel drive light. <clears throat> Sometimes you gotta move them around, you know, a little bit to let the let everything engage. But that is not what's going on here. So I'll put it in neutral. That should be four high. Yep. So either the vacuum signal is just not high enough to pull this thing around or it's not working I don't know but whatever the case I ain't gonna get it working tonight so there's a there's a kit that basically disables that vacuum four-wheel drive engagement system and it's just a cable engagement system so it's like 150 bucks pinch my finger in the jack stand so it's like 150 bucks I already spent like 115 or 10 or something like that on that um, actuator so that sucks but maybe the only way to really know if I've got this working is just buy that cable kit or try to make my own with uh, with the old unit from this so anyway um, I think that's gonna do it for this episode failure of a uh, half-ass garage I'm not sure if the trucks just old and the stuff isn't working correctly or if it's actually broken so I guess I can find out more later on but I'm done for the night that's for sure okay so I went through this vacuum line right there all the way back you can see right here I've got the kind of vacuum lines all bundled up and out of the way I went through all the vacuum lines again I added some rubber tube which is oh, you can't see it um, right here rubber tube that's actually the heater control box up in there so rubber tube it's all out of the way now uh, added some clips down on the top of that, uh, you can't, maybe you can see it. So, added spring clips down on top of the uh, little connector down there. So, with those clips on, tested all the vacuum again. Everything should be good, and we should have four-wheel drive. So let's go in the truck and see if we do.
So, tested the light, everything. Oh, I, I have the battery disconnected. Hang on. All right, so the battery is now connected. Ah, dome light works. Okay, so. different all right so I'll take it out and test it a little bit later on but the way that that switch works is you know you if the four-wheel drive light comes on that fork has to be all the way over so that's all good so finally the four-wheel drive works the vacuum stuff is a total nightmare so if you have the opportunity, I'd say, to get that PosiLock system, which is a cable driven, excuse me, cable driven actuator, that just might be the way to go because this is a lot. It's only like 50 bucks more than buying all the vacuum crap for this plus the actuator down there. So it might be worth it, but we'll take it out and try it out in here in a minute. Got some clunking happening so I don't know if the clunking is the u-joints probably all needs to be greased up we're in four low right now so just back up here a little bit we'll see what happens drive yeah that's two-wheel drive so neutral is kind of hard to find so I don't know what that is too high again I guess I don't know how this works I think something's jammed up in it that should be neutral that should be too high and four low, so or four high. So so four high. Let me stick it down into four low and see. I believe it's gotta be a neutral. There, so we should be in four low now. Yep. There's a deer lay. Hear it? Sounds like, uh, I don't know what that is. I'll have to look around. Sounds like the U-joints or something like that are a little toasty. But, we've got four-wheel drive. Heck yeah. 
Yeah, looks like the deer have been laying out there a little bit. Sweet! I'm pretty happy that this works now. So now instead of getting 10 miles to a gallon, I'll be getting four. This is so rough out here, I don't want to beat on the truck. little thing fell off so yeah it works pretty good take the long way around no animals today there's some turkeys out here somewhere damn this field is rough Well, I can't tell you just how doggone happy I am to have this four-wheel drive system working without having to spend another $160 on that posi lock. I thought it was just, oh, wait, we need to check to see if our heater controls work. Oh, Jesus, I guess it does. Well, shoot. Um, Yeah, all right, so max AC. I don't think I have AC in this truck. But now it's coming out of the vents. Let's see, floor. I don't know, I can't feel anything down there. Oh, that's, that should be floor. Yep, got a nice, nice breeze coming out of there. This works sweet. Well, so now the, I guess that works. All right. I really don't think that the AC works on this truck. But something's better than nothing. At least now I can control where where the you know air is coming out of so I can defrost the windshield if I need to Oops, so I can stick it on over there yep works good awesome well so there we go anyway thanks for hanging out with me beating on the old ram or working on or whatever you want to call it um, I do appreciate you chilling out I'm glad that we were able to get it fixed it was kind of a pain I'm not super great with vacuum stuff, but we did end up getting it done, and that's awesome. And it only cost us the 110, well, 100, maybe, it didn't, maybe it's gonna cost us more. But uh, yeah, not too much money. Just that actuator and uh, a bunch of new vacuum lines in way more time than I wanted to spend on it. But anywho, thanks a lot for hanging out in the half-ass garage with me. And uh, it's cool. Now we got a, a ram to have fun with in the winter time, so which will be coming up pretty soon, probably. So, thanks again. See you later. On a side note, check this out. Well, I lost my pin, I think, but bouncing around out there in the field, and this managed to stay on. But I tried to get this thing off, beating on it, spraying it down with penetrating fluid, and then heating it up. I wrapped a chain on that. Wrapped it to the front of the bucket on the tractor, rammed into it, didn't budge it. So I grabbed the sledgehammer and tried to whack it around top to bottom, side to side. And uh, this is what fell off of it from hitting it with a hammer. So all along the entire thing, so more rust. But yeah, that's just what fell out of the truck from smacking that thing with a hammer. And then when I put it up on my buddy's lift the other day, the frame flex actually made the uh, actually made the parking brake thing just break right off. So yeah, she's a uh, she's a little rusty. There's gas tank strap rusted right off. 
just noticed. Mm, so, definitely kind of gross, rusty wise, but should still be fun, four wheel drive. So, thanks again. We'll see you soon.